In the last segment, we showed how the loss of electrons yields a positive charge. Loss of electrons, positive charge. So I'm going to use some of this space up here. Let's say we go to 19F or 19F minus. Fluorine, fluorine, okay, they both have F. Nine protons, okay, so nine protons, nine protons. No charge. Nine pluses, how many minuses do I need to equal zero? Now I have a minus or a minus one charge. So my nine pluses plus some number of negatives has to equal negative one. Again, 10 electrons, 10 electrons, 10 electrons. I'm trying to show that there's something magic about that 10 electrons, which will manifest as we go along. When we gain electrons, we get a negative charge. Okay. Now, atomic mass versus mass number. So the mass number is what you see on the individual nuclide symbol. And as we saw on the other page, we can have isotopes of the same element. Okay? Now, what you have on the periodic table, okay? So what you have on the periodic table, for example, for hydrogen, is not the mass number, but the atomic mass. Okay, so I'm going to write that box down here. 1H1.0079, I believe. Okay, because this is really blurry, so if it's not quite right, just go along with my analogy. Okay, so what this is, is this is the atomic mass, which is a weighted average of the isotopes in the world around us, okay? Now, weighted average is something that we will not do mathematically in this class, but what you need is a concept. Since the weighted average is pretty close to one, that tells you that even though there are three isotopes of hydrogen, that the most prevalent one is hydrogen one. That one contributes most to the collection, okay, so the collection, what contributes most will be most heavily weighted. So if I say pink or red shades, we have mostly pink or red shades in my collection here. Same idea over here. If what I see on the periodic table is close to one, then that is saying that this is the most prevalent isotope. Okay, carbon is similar. By the way, the unit here is AMU, AMU, okay? Six protons, carbon, 12.01 AMU is the weighted average or atomic mass of the isotopes that you see in the world around you. And what that means is that since we have these three isotopes, carbon-12, carbon-13, carbon-14, it's carbon-12 that you see most often in the world around you. The reason that this is important is that it has to do with radioactivity, which we'll talk about later. Okay? Now, most of the time, what you see on the periodic table, okay, is a representation. Chlorine is 35.45 AMU, which really tells you that, for example, if I write that one, chlorine 35.45, what that tells you is that there, if there's chlorine 35 and chlorine 36, for example, as the isotopes in the world around you, that there's about an equal amount of them because the weighted average is about halfway in between these two. All right, so let's put this all together. When we gain or lose protons, we get a new element. When we gain or lose neutrons, we get isotopes. And what we see on the periodic table 
is the atomic mass in AMU, it won't say that, but the unit is AMU, of the isotopes that exist in the world around us. And it gives you an idea of which one you see most often. When we gain or lose electrons, we get a charged particle. These are called ions. Okay, a positively charged particle is called a cation. And we get those from when we lose electrons, we get a positive charge. A minus charge is called an anion, and we get those when we gain electrons. Okay, so on the other page, when I said metals lose electrons to give us positive charge, metals will form cations, okay? Metals will get plus charges. Non-metals will accept those electrons. So if, so if I'm a metal and I have an electron that I need to give away, something else has to accept it. And it's the non-metal that will accept that electron. So we're going to pretend my pencil here is an electron. Okay. The non-metal will have to accept it. Okay. So my hand is the metal. My pencil is the electron. I'm going to give that electron away. My hand now has a positive charge because it's lost that one electron. The electron has to go somewhere. So my left hand is going to be the non-metal. It's going to pick up this electron, and now it's going to get the negative charge. You're going to want to be sure you get an idea of that in your mind because where we're going to go next is we're going to put our pluses and minuses together. Okay? Page six are some more examples. So if I give you, say, um, 207PB, 207PB plus two. Actually, you know what? I should not use transition metals. Um, actually, I'm sorry. 207PB, 207PB plus two, 207PB plus four. Okay, so I'm going to put those in there. Um, sulfur 16, sulfur 17, sulfur 16, 2 minus. Okay, so what you should do is you should fill out this table. Okay, and I will do it quickly to see if I can get this all on one um, segment here. This is lead. This is lead, this is lead, sulfur, sulfur, sulfur. Okay, lead has 82 protons, 82 protons, 82 protons, sulfur, 16, 16, 16. And since we're at about eight minutes, what I will do is stop the um, audio recording here, the video recording here. You finish the table and we will begin segment five next.